we say goodbye on a subjective level for our own sakes. In a sense, this rebellion that we have against the, the finitude of life creates a tension in us. If any of us have ever received news that put our own life possibly at risk, we've experienced that tension. It emerges usually most immediately in the form of fear. It can also come out through bargaining, it can come out through denial, but usually it's rooted in that there's this immediate rejection that says, no, 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 this isn't right. So for our own sakes, to be able to deal with that, and to be able to deal with it when it happens to someone close to us, that is when we also give ourselves means to say goodbye. So we say goodbye for the sake of the deceased. We want to honor them. We want to honor their memory. And isn't it appropriate that this talk is being given on November the 11th, Remembrance Day? We want to honor those who have gone on. We also want to do this for the sake of those in a relationship with the deceased. I'm sure many of us have gone to visit a funeral home, for example, where we didn't know the person who had died, but we work with one of their children, or we are friends with one of their family. And so knowing that they are going through a difficult period, we rally around it. That's another important reason. So there's the sake of the deceased, there's the sake of the family, and then there's for our own sake. We do this because we look to move on. This is a painful time, and we don't want to stay in the pain. There is an important need for closure. And one thing funeral, funeral rituals do is precisely because they're rituals, they help us to achieve some measure of closure. The grieving process may take a long time, but at least it helps us get through it in the immediate term. I've heard people say, you know, my, my family member has died and I, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Well, by having a sense of a recipe for at least certain things that can be done, it helps us to take the next few steps to keep the momentum of life going, which is part of the healing process. Very often I've, I've been to uh, funeral home visits. I usually go on the last day and the last period when I go to visit if I can and I meet the family and I say to them you must be tired and the answer is I'm exhausted and I tell them that's a good thing even the fatigue of the process allows for a kind of de-stressing to occur it allows you to, to unwind a little bit and get ready for the next step which in most cases is the actual funeral itself so these are important reasons for the sake of the deceased, for the sake of family and friends, for our own sake, to be able to move on. These are good human reasons. You don't have to be Catholic to have these reasons. These are good human reasons. But here's the thing. Are they enough? Are they enough? Someone who works at the Archdiocese recently lost his mom. And I went to go visit with him and offer my condolences, went to his office. And he looked at me at one point and he said, I don't know how people who don't have faith can get through this. He felt, through the process, the importance that his faith was, the importance of it to him to be able to go through this very human and universal process. Faith, and this is where we get specifically to our Christian faith, our Catholic faith, does make a big difference. All those people who wonder, does faith make a difference? Just go through this process and we discover what an impact it can have. Death needs to be understood in a faith perspective. Because if it's not, if there is no faith, then death really is the end. That's it. That's all there is. And we are stuck only looking backwards, only 
looking to the past, what has happened, because there would be no future. But with faith, and with a faith that confirms that instinct that there is an immortal side to us, that transforms our experience. These are a couple of quotes that I pulled from the scriptures, which express, in my opinion, very well the kind of transformation Christian faith, when it's well understood and lived, can bring. From the letter to the Hebrews, Jesus came to deliver all those who, through fear of death, were subject to lifelong bondage. The fear of death, just like the fear of anything else, puts us in bondage. We are not free if we are fearful. We don't, know, we don't have the fullness of interior freedom if we are fearful. So Jesus, who died, but also rose, and who can share his resurrection with us, that sets us free, or at least helps set us free from the fear of death. It helps us to be a people of courage. It helps us to be a people of courage in the face of the many challenges of life, not just the challenge of death itself. St. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says, for, me, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. I remember going to, a uh, again, a visit in a funeral parlor, and at the funeral parlor they had a little kitty section, you know, because it's a long process, and the attention span for little children is not always the greatest, and so they would have a little table, little chairs, crayons, you know, kids could draw and stuff. And I went over and I saw one kid drawing things, and I sat down, I said, how are you doing? I'm okay. So what do you, what do you think of all this? And she said to me, I don't know why everybody's so sad. I mean, none is in heaven. Why is everybody so sad? Faith of a child, but the faith of St. Paul. It's better to be with Christ. It's better to be in heaven. Nothing wrong with being on earth. You get to color. You get to draw. <laughs> but what's the big deal? I found that very, very telling. That is the faith of a child. I've also seen what happens when there isn't faith, and how faith, when brought into a situation, can transform it. 